Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir and here we have Female Furies number four. Good God. You know, the way this book was going, it kind of felt, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video, that they had, uh, that uh, Cecil had been told to, is, is it Cecil? Like Cecilia, is that how she pronounces it? Um, yeah, I think she was told to tone it down, tone it down, you're going way, way too off. And it kind of felt like it was being toned down a little bit, you know, with the whole... <sighs> The, the, the F word, <laughs> the feminism. Um, but by that, it's the radical type feminism, the, the the current, you know, some people call it third wave, some people call it fourth wave, fourth wave, uh, the Tumblr feminism. Um, it seemed like it had been toned down. And, oh, it is back in spades. Oh, now, remember, uh, Oriel was killed in the previous issue. She was killed by Willick. And so, she's continuing, and when I say she, I mean Cecil is continuing to just completely retcon, you know, the, 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 the Furies, just changing history. Because remember, Oreo was never, uh, she wasn't a member of the Female Furies until later, and she was never the leader. That was Big Barda. Uh, it, it, Big Barda was the leader, the leader of the female Furies. Um, you know, and then she came to Earth with Scott Free, and, um, and and the and the Furies joined her for a while, and they went back to uh, Apocalypse. But there is some canon to that, and this is just uh, completely retconning all that. I'm hoping this limited series doesn't stick because it is garbage. I'm saying that right up front. There's no need to hide it. This is another issue that when I read it, uh, it just came out today. I it it it, it ticked me off. It it really kind of did because you know not the messages. I mean they're stupid. I'm kind of used to it now. It's kind of seeing what all she's going to throw in to see if it sticks. No, it's it's all the changes. That she's making, you know, because she totally fridged a character, Oriel, to serve as an inspiration for another character. That was totally what she did with that character, um, you know, put her up in a position. And that's like one of the number one things that, you know, uh, people complain about, you know, is the treatment of female characters being used in that regard. And so it makes you very hypocritical to actually do that. When you're trying to make this girl power thing. <laughs> anyway, into the issue. It starts off with a flashback. Um, to when Granny Goodness, just then just goodness, kills Darkseid's mother. You know, um, you know, die, Hagra. You know, goodness, if you ever want power, I pass it to you. The book, my work. In the end, woman must help woman. Unlock it. The, it's the key to... Yeah, then, you know... We get where Desaad claims um, victory because he gave uh, Goodness the poison. Remember this conversation? Remember when uh, Goodness was choking her in the first issue, and then um, they had the little conversation. You know, she's choking her. She, you know, Helga, couldn't, Hel Helga couldn't couldn't breathe, and so that's why she dumped the poison into her mouth. And then she said all this and handed off the book. Remember that? Remember that scene? Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah, no, no, no. You see, let's take a look at the page in question. This is from issue one. This is the scene as it happened. You know, goodness is choking her. You know, uh, you know, she's nearly gone. Your method will take too long. So he throws that poison vial. And she dumps it in the mouth. And then you see goodness just standing there kind of limply. No book being passed. Nothing. If you're writing a six-issue limited series like this, and you're planning to have something like this come up later, introduce it. And there's no conversation. There's really even no time to talk here because, you know, as you saw, she was being choked, and that's when the poison was thrown to her. Yeah. Didn't happen. So, don't... 
you you plan for this kind of thing. I would I would give this a pass if this were an ongoing uh, series where you plan so much, but you don't know what you're going to write like two years down the line, or maybe some other writer wrote that scene, and you're going to take the scene and put in a little you know uh, a, a little bit of information, not quite a retcon, but just you know the camera wasn't focusing on this point. You showed this. It's the same writer. It's the same artist. And God, the art's bad sometimes. This did not happen in the scene you showed in the first issue. We're on the first page. We're on the first effing page. <sighs> so we get a little bit of um, going back, you know, in the past here. Um, we see where, uh, goodness, goes down and gets Orion from uh, his mother. And how uh, she goes to uh, Dark Sign, and they're they're discussing discussing the plan. You know, they're going to get Scott free. Um, they're going to let him escape so that it will end the treaty with New Genesis. And that's pretty much how it goes. You know, that's exactly was Dark Side's plan. Okay, this is kind of keeping up with the canon here. Um, and then, and then it gets kind of weird. So, here we have, you know, Apocalypse Now. Uh, uh, see what you did there? Uh, see? <sighs> the Graveyard of the Fallen. You know, okay, I, does, does, I don't remember, does Apocalypse really have graveyards? You know, maybe for the big people, you know, important people they do, but... So, Scott Free comes out to, you know, apologize for their loss, and that's Scott Free. I don't know how long after the last issue this occurred, um, because I have <laughs> the previous issue, issue number three, where we see a much you know thinner, skinnier, balder Scott. So he's had time to bulk up, have his hair grow out, uh, unbreak his nose. Apparently, you know if you if you look at that side thing, you see that, you see that crook. That's the same character. Let's put them kind of close to one another. Yeah, that's the same character with hair. Different skin color. Uh, okay, maybe he got some more sun here. Uh, maybe some t enough time, a few months have passed. That's apparently the same character. Anyway, enough of the previous issues. Um, you know, uh, you know, he tells her, we're on the same side. And then the retcons really begin to start in earnest. So we see the terror orphanage, and we find out that Scott and Barda were friends together. They grew up together. They've always, well, I don't know if you say friends, but they've always been together, um, going through challenges together. In fact, you know, uh, they helped one another. He helped her uh, survive this uh, challenge. Uh, she couldn't do it, so she helped him up, and he brought her up uh, with him. Okay, seems pretty cute, right? So, uh, goodness says um, that, uh, you know, Scott Free, you always manage to escape from the fangs of death. And you, girl, I'm impressed. I like what I see. Report to me for special training. Since my daughters are denied advancement, I'm, per I'm forming an elite group of females who show promise. Now, what's funny about this, what is really funny about this, is... See, Cecil's message, uh, Cecil, whatever, Castellucci, um, Barda would not have survived had it not been for Scott rescuing her. I just want to point that out, um, because then she goes on a whole, all the problems with men. And, and maybe this is just the, the one good man. Maybe Scott Free is the one good man. So we go back to the here and now, um, where they were talking, but then, you know, they get busted by guards. And Barda defends Scott and helps him escape. And so the guards tell her, you know, um, you know, there's chatter of a skirmish at one of the fire pits. It's the forever people. Let's go. If we work together, we can beat them. There's no time to lose. And one of the male guards says, you can sit this one out. Let the real fighters do their job, sweetheart. And then, you know, basically pokes her in the tit. You know, even with the sound effect, poke. You get that face. I outrank you. And I'm more than capable at your job than you are. I fought them before. I know their weaknesses. And yeah, you get 
uh, they, they she gets busted, um, and she gets captured. Um, at this point, uh, goodness is appointing uh, Lashina to be the leader of the Furies. Okay. And, um, there's conniving going on. And then it gets weird. Barda tries to file a complaint. Okay, I know Apocalypse is hell. I know hell is filled with lawyers and HR people. But really, to make a complaint about protectorate officers, fill in these forms. As a woman, you have no authority to make a legal complaint. You'll have to get a man, any man, to sign off on what you claim's true. It's the law. Why? I outrank most men. All Furies do. My words should be enough. <sighs> oh, God. So she goes to Willick. Um, I won't sign. I pulled enough strings for you. You helped a wanted man slip away. Piece of advice, darling. Don't interfere with my business again. So he tears up the contract. Um, oh, oh, and this whole scene, um, tell me if this reminds you of anything. Anything that was in the news in the past few years, okay? Um, what will your man's punishment be for disregarding me when I ask them to go to battle with them? They will suffer no consequences for their actions. They are at the start of their careers. We must think of their futures. They've been through enough. They're boys being normal, enthusiastic boys. They were the real victims in your actions. Oh, and of course, we need to bring up Oriel again. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. And you know what? It gets worse. It does get worse. So Barda is sent to basically uh, clean foliage. Um... This place, it's so beautiful. Like pictures I've seen of Earth and New Genesis. You know, look at all the flowers and butterflies. This beauty reminds me of Scott. I wonder how he is. No, don't think of Scott. She takes a flamethrower to it. Don't think of Earth. Forget any feelings. Push them away. Harden yourself. These aren't tears. My eyes are affected by the smoke, by the new fire pit I am creating. And this horrible, horrible shower scene where it just looks like she's actually thicker without her armor, somehow. Oh, Scott, why did you make me remember? Why did you open my mind? Oh, God, it's just so badly written. <laughs> we always just speak our feelings. Oh, what is that line from Futurama? That makes me so angry. Oh, I, I'll have to cut this really soon, but there is one more part I really, really need to show. I just got to find it here. Um, <laughs> oh, bear with me. I'm just going to pull aside because I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but basically, Big Barter becomes a fear, becomes a leader of the furries, <laughs> furries, furies for all of a minute. And that's, that's it. Um, then she escapes to Earth, and uh, basically because she let Scott Free escape uh, too early. And uh, I can't find the scene I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, here it is. <laughs> uh, she goes back to the Furies. They're, you know, again on her case. Um, you must have done something to get Darkseid's favor. That place was rightfully mine, talking about becoming the leader of the Furies. Granny named me. She doesn't believe in you anymore. I did nothing. It is the men who are enemies. They put us against each other. That's how they keep us down. Welcome me as your leader, and I can protect us if we were together. Oriel was being tortured by Willick, and he tried the same on me. Well, anyhow, um, they, they refuse her, and she escapes to Earth. So she was the leader, leader of the Furies, for furies for like this long that long and this part i wanted to point out is really interesting it's the men who are our enemies they pit us against each other no no they don't i've been reading this since the first issue you know who's been pitting you against one another it's been goodness yeah 
the same one who was told in the scene that never happened before, um, how you know women must help women, uh, a woman must help woman. Yeah, no, no, it's not the men who are turning you against one another. It has been your own jealousy, and it's been goodness. This has been shown issue after issue. You know, especially when uh, Oriel was getting the special treatment from Willick. And, yeah, Barta, even you uh, accused her of being a liar, and you all said she must be getting some special treatment. Yeah. Weren't quite listening and believing then, were you? Oh. So, yeah. Big Barda, leader of the female Furies, before she escaped and went to Earth to be with Scott Free. She's not the leader. And, you know, for like for like one scene, and then she escapes. So a character who was never, you know, really that important to the female Furies, um, was in the first three issues, raised up, um, made really prominent, made the leader, you know, when it was actually uh, Barda at the time, um, and then was, you know, obviously killed, uh, which she was killed originally in the original canon, um, you know, for dancing, she was killed by Willick. Um, so there's, like, little hints, you know, the very broadest strokes, and now it's been retconned that Scott and Barda have been, um, you know, known each other since childhood, believed in one another, um, you know, helped one another. When before, it was Barda saw something in Scott that she didn't see anywhere else on uh, on on Apocalypse. That sense of goodness, that sense of uh, peace and tranquility. That's something that, that doesn't come from Apocalypse. That, you know, basically inspired her to eventually flee on her own. Nope. No, they used Oreo's death to push them together and but they've always been together and it's you do paperwork to file a complaint on apocalypse file a complaint oh oh and the whole thing what makes that scene really stupid is what Barda and Oriel did in an earlier issue uh, when Willick was blackmailing about that uh, she comes clean about that and doesn't get in trouble she gets promoted I can't kind of skip through that. Um, so yeah, in a place where you can kill someone's, you know, bastard kid, um, and you don't get in trouble, you get promoted. You're telling me that they have an HR department and lawyers that file complaints stacks this high? Oh God! And of course, there's the little stupid stuff like the training scene. Um, where one of the things is the, uh, release the bitches. I'm actually surprised she didn't name this issue that. Uh, what she titled this one? What's Bread in the Bone? Uh, this book is garbage. It's, this, the, you know, I don't want to see books canceled. I really don't. I want to see books get better. I don't want to see garbage put out there. You know, I said in previous issues, if you want to make a comic with a you know more feminist message, there's nothing wrong with it. I will say there is nothing wrong with that. Um, what I have a problem with is when you take characters, change their stories to fit the message, a message that wasn't there to begin with, and then you have to start changing the canon so things will fit what you're trying to say. And to do it to Jack freaking Kirby, of all people, that's just unforgivable. I, I, I don't know how you can get away with this at DC. Who is... Oh, yeah, that's right. Simonson did the cover on that. God, I love Simonson. Uh, no, I was just seeing who... Uh, uh, associate editors, uh, Brittany and Harvey Richards, uh, Brittany Holzner, and editor Jamie Rich. I don't know who these people are. Uh, this, uh, this book is garbage. I don't want to see a book canceled, but I think this one should just just stop it. Cut cut your losses. Run. Don't don't continue this book because you've got two issues left in this limited series, and it's going to be you know of course Scott and Barda going to Earth, and um, you know it's a female Furies series, and it's it was mostly focused on Oriel. It switched to Barda. Um, 
Lashina's got has been given a few lines. The other ones, you know, like Mad Harriet, they've barely been given anything. This is not a female furies book. It is not. This book is hot garbage. You know, this is one of those ones that I'm tempted to tear up. I really don't want to do that. I, I it, that's symbolic. I don't like destroying books. I know I've done it, but that's always been in severe fits of agony. Um, you know, just where I'm just so angry at a book that I tear it up. But no, it, it, write it. Full six. Full six down. Be given that a lot lately because a lot of these books are trash. And again, you can't even keep a scene. You start off the first issue with a scene that's a flashback to something you showed just a few issues ago that didn't match. Uh, it's bad writing. This is bad writing on multiple levels. It, it, it's sloppy. It's pandering. You know... We have characters just saying how they feel. It, it, it's funny, like I was saying about the whole feminist thing, you undercut your own point so many times in just this issue alone, and you've done it throughout the series. I <sighs> can't believe I've gone on for 21 minutes already. I say that quite a bit. You know, I, it's just, I, I, I'm done with this. I'm, oh, there's got to be something better coming out. You know what came out this week? Uh, pulling out my stack here. Um, what I'm kind of curious about is this guy, Deceased. Is this going to be another zombie story? I really don't know too much about it. I remember this getting announced, and uh, it just seems like we can't finish anything. Heroes in Crisis is still going. Uh, Doomsday Clock is still going. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this little series. Oh, and the summer event just started with, uh, the 25 cent issue of, um, Year of the Villain. This is going to be the new summer event. We've got two other events that haven't even finished yet. Anyway, if you stuck around this long, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.